My name is Devin Peterson. I'm a grad student, a PhD student in the RISE lab at UC Berkeley. And today I'm here to talk about Modin, formerly called Pandas on Ray, and how you can accelerate your Pandas workflows by changing one line of code. So to get started, I'd like to share a little anecdote. Uh, my background is in genomics and computational biology data science. So I used to build systems for biologists to extract data or extract value from their data and, and learn about their data. Um, and these systems were usually built on big data ecosystems. And so one day, I'm talking with one of my fellow data scientists, and we're talking a bit about how data science works. And so I put down a few comments from this conversation here. Um, these are what I call comments from a data scientist who runs production genomics workloads. He says, data is too large to be used in pandas. As you may know, genomics data is tens of gigabytes to terabytes. But he wants to be able to interact with his data. So the way that he solves this problem is he ends up using big data tools to trim down the data so that he can use pandas to analyze it. Now, this is not what these tools are intended for, but Pandas is a great way of interacting with your data. Pandas API is actually inherently interactive. So why can't we use the same tools for kilo and, data and megabyte scale data as we do for terabyte scale data, and vice versa? So let's take a look at what I call the current data science landscape. We have tools that are good at megabytes, maybe a few gigabytes. These are single node tools. This isn't all of them, of course. But these are the tools that are used. They've been used for years. They're used in production at many companies. And they're very well established. In fact, they're so well established that these are the tools that we teach to students, actually, to learn data science. So let's look at the other side, terabyte scale data. Of course, this isn't all of them, again. but. We have these tools that are also, many of them are used in production, and they end up being, they end up being a bit different than the megabyte scale tools or the gigabyte scale tools. And so there's this disconnect where I can't use my megabyte scale tools for terabyte scale data, and when I try to use my big data tools on a single node, the, the small scale tools actually scale much better on that single node. We get poor performance with these large scale tools. And so when we look at the current data science landscape at a terabyte plus, a lot of these new frameworks that are coming up have new APIs. These APIs are often SQL-like or pandas-like. And many of them also support SQL natively, which is a good thing. But many pandas operations are not covered by SQL. We have a whole host of operations that are linear algebra operations in, in uh, Pandas. Many of these operations, or rather, many of these frameworks also expose distributed, uh, excuse me, distributed computing concepts to their users. These concepts include partitioning and shuffling, things like that. And tuning these is actually crucial for your performance. In fact, if you choose incorrectly in the number of partitions, your performance will be hurt significantly. Many of these are also too heavyweight for a good performance at a smaller scale. And a lot of them are optimized for batching. Now, none of these really applies to every single one, and all of them have different components of each of these. But a data scientist's core goal is to extract value from data. And we're exposing these distributed computing concepts to them. But what is it about extracting value from data that actually requires some expertise in distributed computing? I think nothing. So with Modin, we're trying to bridge the gap between analytics at megabyte scale and terabyte scale data. A lot of this has to do with how we use the API or how we build our API. So, Modin, the tagline is accelerate your pandas workflows by changing one line of code. I'm sure you've all been waiting patiently to find out what this line was. I've, I've teased you long enough. It's the import statement. 
So instead of importing pandas as PD, you import modin.pandas as PD, and now you're using all the cores on your machine to be able to do your analytics. Sidebar, this, was, uh, th this is Jupyter Slides, and this was run in a Jupyter Notebook on uh, my desktop at home. It's a little bit old, but I think that's okay. Okay, so for starters, let's just build some toy data and play around. So we can import NumPy and create this 2D NumPy array. Pass it to a data frame, and we see even the data frame constructor is exactly the same. I didn't have to specify partitioning. And I can add some prefix to the columns to make it a little bit easier to work with, things like this. And when I print out the type, it's a mode and data frame. So if I were to print out the first 10 lines with head, we see it renders an HTML table just like pandas would. Now this looks a little bit different than it does in, in Jupyter itself, and pandas has the same behavior. We'll, we'll look later at an actual notebook, but it is literally the same thing that pandas prints out. But with Modin, we're managing the data partitioning and shuffling so that you can focus on extracting value from your data. This is what we believe data scientists' purpose is. Not focusing on things like shuffling and partition. Okay, so let's take a look at read CSV. Read CSV is by far the most used pandas, pandas operation. I mean, it makes sense, right? You have to ingest your data somehow. But here I imported pandas uh, so that we can do a quick comparison. And when we run read CSV on pandas, it takes about 29 and a half seconds on this 800 megabyte data set. And with Modin, it's taking 7.6. Now remember, this was run on four cores. So we get a 4x speed up here. This is actually fantastic. But you'll also notice there's no place to put partitioning here. Excuse me. I didn't have to specify the number of partitions. Let's take a look at group by. Group by the performance isn't as impressive at first. But pandas group by is actually extremely well written and it's actually extremely performant. And when you have something like Modin, which is distributed across all the cores of your machine, there's a lot of communication if you know a little bit about how group by is implemented. And so even with that communication overhead on a single node, we're still actually outperforming. And we don't really have a whole lot of optimizations in the way of group by in place yet. And so I'm actually really excited about the future of this. This is just basically leveraging all the cores on your machine. So I'm, I'm really excited about group by in the future of group by. So let's take a quick look at transpose. Transpose, you see here, it's extremely fast. At first, it's only manipulating metadata. This is kind of the, the lazy idea, the lazy operation idea. Not everything in Modin is lazy yet. But when we take a look at this and we print out the tail, tail takes, you know, 100 milliseconds or so. And you can operate with it, you can operate on this data frame essentially in real time. Interactivity, that's really the, the core point of Modin. But in Modin, we're handling all the partitioning and all the shuffling for you so that you can focus on just continuing to use your workflows. The goal is to be able to continue using the same tools that you are at small data on large data. You're doing the same thing after all. It's the same operations. So you, have to, it, you shouldn't have to change your API whenever you grow to be that large. So how do we get this speed up? Um, this is a modern laptop. Well, let, let's pretend that this is what a modern laptop looks like. Um, four cores and a data frame that fits comfortably in memory. Let, let's pretend like this is our workflow for now. So with Pandas, Pandas is only using one of your CPUs. And you have a bunch of idle cores that are essentially doing nothing. With Modin, we're actually using all the cores in your machine. So we get full utilization, and that helps you be more productive. So let's take a look at a large machine. Pandas on a large machine, it becomes much more evident. Let's pretend like this is some server or something. So 
Pandas is still only using one core. But Modin can still use all of the cores. And so a good illustration of this is a plot that we made. I'm fortunate enough to have access to a machine that has 144 cores. And read CSV, you, we, we see this really nice linear scaling in pandas, but that's because it's still only using one core. It may be hard to see the bars because they're so low in Modin, but two gigabytes takes about two seconds. 18 gigabytes takes less than 18 seconds. So we get more than a gigabyte per second on this machine of read throughput, which is fantastic. So Modin is an early multi, er, excuse me, an early stage multi-process data frame library with an identical API to Pandas. Cluster support is coming soon. So talked about Pandas a lot. Let's dig a little bit deeper. The Pandas API is massive. It has a very rich API. That's partly why it's used. And it has such, such a wide range of use cases in, in many different industries. But if we take a look, data frame, 280 plus methods, series, 280 plus methods, other operations like concat or get dummies or things like that, 40 plus. That's, that's a lot of operations. And you might look at me and say, well, like, how do you even get started implementing this, right? Where do you even start? How, how do you get started whenever this is such an overwhelmingly large amount of things that are, need to be implemented? So we took a data-driven approach. We actually took a look at what people use in Pandas. We went to Kaggle, and we did a massive scrape of all the notebooks and scripts that people use to you know, enter competitions and to play around and, and learn and, and to instruct even. There's a wide variety of use cases uh, in Kaggle. And we basically counted them. And we figured out what are the most popular methods. And you can see read CSV, of course, is by far the most. A lot of actually data sets in Kaggle or CSV. So that explains part of that. But now that we have this information, we can actually start implementing things and optimizing them in the order of their popularity. And so we actually did that. So we started with the most popular methods, and we kind of started working our way down. Currently, we support about 71% of the Pandas API, which represents about 93% of usage based on our study. Series is not yet distributed, although you can access the full API. But as we continue developing this and adding to, you know, adding a distributed series, we'll be able to get a lot of optimizations and things like group by. And now, you know, I mentioned before all the, all the optimizations we can add in group by. We're actually doing group by without a distributed series, without a distributed 1D object. So, um, yeah, that, that actually should help kind of put those numbers in context a little bit better. Multi-index. Uh, Multi-index is something that a lot of people use. Uh, we have preliminary support for that. It, it works mostly. Yeah, it should. <laughs> no, it, it works. A lot of things do default to pandas. I'm, I'm getting to this. What happens to the rest, though? What if, what if something that you use falls in that 30%? Well, uh, I'm happy to announce this week we actually implemented something really nice. We can actually default to pandas. So I, I mentioned this a little bit about the you know, uh, multi-index thing. Multi-index, some, some operations do default to pandas. And that, that's what I meant by preliminary. But um, let's take a look at how this works. So covariance. Covariance, some of you may use covariance. But in our study, less than half a percent of the notebooks ended up using it. So it, it falls fairly low on the, on the order. So we haven't implemented it yet. But people still use it. It's useful. So we see here, if I do df.cov, we see a warning. And the warning says defaulting to pandas implementation. This is how you know that Modin is not working in parallel, essentially. So you should expect a little bit lower performance. And so we, when we do head, we see that the covariance was, in fact, calculated. But it's important to note that this is a Modin data frame. 
And what we're doing is we're effectively taking our distributed, pan, or excuse, excuse me, our distributed modin data frame, converting it to pandas, performing the operation on that, and then converting it back. And of course, distributed in this case means multiprocess. It's an overloaded term, I know this, but um, distributed in that we have partitions and things like this. So now you can do almost anything in Modin that you could normally do in Pandas. This is great. You can start trying it out. So let's take a look under the hood. What does Modin look like behind the scenes? I'm going to go through each of these individually. At the top, I've talked about a lot of already about this, uh, the Pandas API. It's identical to Pandas. Below that, we have a query compiler layer. And this is the layer where we get a lot of optimizations when it comes to um, you know, language-specific things, memory-specific things. Um, we have a, an in-memory format right now that is Pandas. And so we can do a lot of optimizations understanding basically the in-memory format. The partition manager layer, this is managing partitioning. This is actually also a very interesting component of Modin because the partition manager has full control over the size and shape of the partitions and the number of partitions. You remember I said we don't expose the number of partitions to the user. That's because in Modin, we can actually change the number of partitions based on the operation. We can alter the shape and size of the partitions. And all this happens because we don't have this requirement that the users tell us how many partitions that we, we need to have. And so the partition manager is also in charge of serializing the query and, and shipping it off to the partitions and things like that. And then you know, at the lowest layer, of course, we have our partitions. And you'll notice that they're, they're partitioned along two axes here. We have essentially what's called block partitioning. It's not row level. It's not, it's not column level. It's actually partitioned along both axes. And this gives us a lot of partitions also, or excuse me, a lot of uh, flexibility also. The flexibility here is that we get scalability in both directions. We can also alter the size and shape of this and the number of, of these partitions based on what the partition manager deems is, is best. And so at an extremely high level, that is the guts of Modin. And you see here, something I haven't mentioned yet, is this, this executes on Ray. And you're probably wondering what Ray is right now. I, I mentioned pandas on Ray, right? It only, it only seems fair that I introduce Ray now, right? So what is Ray? Ray is another research project in the RISE lab at UC Berkeley. It's a task parallel system it's, a, it's an execution framework, essentially. Task parallel, extremely low latency, and extremely highly performant. Effectively, Ray has two main abstractions, tasks and actors. Tasks are akin to functions that you would run, and you can run them remotely. Actors are akin to classes, so you can have some stateful operations. And all of this is built on top of an extremely high performance backend written in C++. And you can see on the top there are a number of layer, or excuse me, there are a number of libraries. Data processing, that's Modin. But we have some RL libraries, some hyperparameter tuning libraries, streaming model serving. We have a number of applications that are being built on top of Ray. And so Ray's core goal is to kind of unify the ML ecosystem. This is a, probably a very overwhelming figure here. Essentially what, what Modin uses most is the object store. Ray exposes a shared memory object store, which makes it extremely easy to write application code, especially when you need to communicate between different partitions. So Ray is open source. You can find it at this URL. Um, and you can also check out their documentation if you're interested. Oh, 
Okay. Demo. Wish me luck. Okay. So for this demo, I decided to do something relatively simple, but hopefully it gets the message across. So 10 minutes of pandas is the famous pandas intro. This is, this is actually on pandas documentation. So it helps you learn pandas. So I downloaded this and converted it to a notebook. And you see here, I'm going to run these. This is pandas. I, I don't know why it's not running. Let's, uh, let's restart the code. Sometimes that fixes things. OK, let's try now. There we go. Cool. OK. So we're going to import pandas, and we're going to go through a bunch of these things. We're going to create a series, create a data frame, create another data frame. You can look at the D types. Tail, checking out the contents, values, describe, maybe getting some summary statistics, transpose, sort. Sort by index, sort by values, maybe some selection things perhaps. And so essentially what I'm doing right now is running pandas. <coughs> and effectively, pandas is running single thread. Now, on this scale of data, it may not make much of a difference. It, it definitely doesn't. But everything here works great. Of course it does. It's pandas, right? OK. That's probably enough for now. So let's change our one line of code. OK, so this is the output that happens whenever you run mode. And this is Ray actually giving you feedback saying, things started off OK. <laughs> OK. Let me, sorry. OK, let's, let's try this again. So something is up with my Jupyter session. <laughs> um, but I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. So um, effectively, <laughs> yeah, you can put this on one of those demo blooper reels or something like this. But uh, effectively, what you would have seen had this worked like it did 10 minutes ago uh, is I change that one line of code, and then I run through everything. And the output is literally the same. And so it literally is a one line of code change, and you've basically unlocked all the cores of your machine to use pandas. OK. So now that our wonderful demo is over, um, let's start to wrap up. So with Modin, you can accelerate your pandas workflows by changing one line of code. The API is identical to pandas. And you don't need to know anything about distributed computing to be able to use it. I talked at a really high level about the architecture, and I also gave a brief introduction to Ray. Moving forward, uh, there, we have a long list of things. This is probably uh, you know, a, a very small subset of things that we really want to do with this library. But you know, one of the things that we really care about is memory management. Pandas is kind of memory hungry. And what we hope to do is kind of continue improving on our memory management ourselves. We also want to implement some uh, out of core memory or out of, out of memory data frames or data frames that exceed memory. Um, query planning, 
there's always exciting research to be done in query planning. Better partitioning planning, more API coverage, distributed panda series, I, I already mentioned that. Currently, we support the most recent stable release of Pandas API, which is 0.23.4. And as, as Pandas API continues to change, it doesn't change a lot at this point, but as it continues to change, we'll continue to change with it. We kind of have to pin ourselves to a specific API if we want to have the kind of identical behavior. And Modin is only eight months old. We, we started this around February time. And so as we continue developing this, it'll get more mature. If you're interested in contributing, we'd love to have you. You can email the mailing list. It's found in the documentation. I'll give you a link in a moment. Uh, you can also just go to the GitHub and pick an issue, or you can come find me wandering around here. And with that, I will take any questions. Yes? Uh, about the query planner uh, optimization that you mentioned, can that be used on Pandas by itself and it, on its own? I'm wondering what kind of optimizations you have in that. So right now, it's pretty crude and uh, pretty early. Uh, most of the work is planned in that space. Um, Perhaps it, it could uh, end up being a contribution to Pandas also. Um, a lot of the work that we're doing here could end up eventually being contributed to Pandas, definitely. Um, we, we built this system to kind of solve this problem of interactivity. And query planning is an important part of that. But when you do query planning on a system that's intended for interactivity, you really have to be careful about how much time you're wasting of the users. So to put this in perspective, um, I, I spent a long time doing, doing research in like applications built on top of Spark. And Spark is lazy. And, and when I interact with Spark, sometimes I don't get error messages until the end of my script. But the error happened on line two or three. So, Really what we're interested in with query planning is making sure that we, we give fast results to the user because interactivity is kind of the, the key here, if that makes sense. Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll have to look at what's there to see the real details of that, right? Well, so, so right now, so um, you want like real details right now? No. Of, of the, okay, okay, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, find me afterward, definitely. Yes, in the back. You mentioned that your system is based on um, kind of running on one machine. On yes. All, all, uh, all the of that yes. At the beginning of the talk, you were talking about scaling to a terabyte size, uh, you know. Yes. Data. Yes. And a lot of the time, it's not possible to do that on one machine because, um, you know, your data is just too large. So is Modin going to kind of address that, um, like this large scale uh, data? Manipulation scheme that uh, that Spark and other like you know, distributed data systems do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, good question. Or is it going to stay on just one machine? Good question. So um, the question was, is Modin going to stay on one machine, or are we going to be able to actually scale to terabyte scale? Um, the short answer is we're going to be able to scale. Modin actually already works on a cluster. Um, the, the one line of code change, though, is not so easy when you have to set up the cluster. So we're working on scripts right now to kind of make that easier. Um, Ray, what it's built on, runs in a cluster without problems. And, and since we're built on top of that, there, there are really no issues with, with running on a cluster. Um, go ahead. Would you be able to do something like interface with an SQL database? Or would you um, still have to use things like Spark to convert your data to something smaller and then you use both with that? So, so effectively right now, all we support is the Pandas API. Pandas has a way for reading from SQL. So uh, it's not, like some of those components, like, like reading from a file and data ingest and things like that, some of them aren't distributed yet. Um, but you know, in the future, we we definitely are are building out that data ingest is you know one of the most challenging parts of of using pandas. So, thank you. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes. 
on, on the issue of memory management, <clears throat> I mean, I know it's a, this is a young project, but I mean, in terms of scaling up interactivity, pandas typically you have to have eight to ten times the amount of memory of to the data set size just for its occasional extra copies and ramp ups or casting. And have you addressed any of that, or is it fundamentally still similar? Like, if you want to play with a 10 terabyte data set, you may need a 4 terabyte or 6 terabyte machine. Yeah, good question. So the question is, um, do we actually address the problem in pandas of memory consumption? Because pandas requires 8 to 10x the, the memory cost. And to answer your question, we've started to solve this problem. Um, the there are a lot of challenges here because uh, just of the because of the nature of, of Panda's API, and and the nature of these like single point updates and things like that. Um, it's something that we're continuing to work on. Uh, and that is also a pain point with with Pandas that we that we want to continue. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, in the back. Uh, can you compare with Dask? So. Yeah, the question is, can I compare with Dask? Um, in, in what respect? Like, with Dask data frames. Like, I see, OK. So how does this compare with Dask data frame is the question. So Dask data frame, um, it exposes a, a subset of the Pandas API. And it's also lazy. So you put in these dot computes everywhere when you want to trigger execution. It doesn't have the exact same output as Pandas for every single operation. If I, if I were to go to this. The demo that you know didn't work so well, but uh, if I were to try to run through run through some of those operations um, in ten minutes to pandas, it would start breaking around iLook because because they don't support iLook, um, and so the API is different. But but fundamentally, Modin is actually like Dask could end up being a backend. Right now we run on Ray, but but the purpose of Modin is kind of to be a data frame library where you can kind of just run it on whatever you have. Um, I, di I didn't really get into that, but generally, you know, I, I think the, the goals with Dask data frame are a bit different than the goals with Modin. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you have do you have a follow up question that you want to clarify? How are they different? Sorry. How are they different? How are they How are they different? Dask is there also to process you know, in the terabytes. Sure, yeah, and, and Dask does scale beyond a single machine. So, I mean, I, I kind of answered the question already related to like the API, right? Um, fundamentally, the architectures are, are very different. Dask, Dask is partitioning things along rows, and Modin is partitioning them along both axes. Um, that gives us the power to be able to support the full Pandas API. Whereas, you know, Dask would require some, some, a lot of effort. Like, you can consider doing a transpose in a system like Dask. You have to do all the all shuffling, all the all communication, and it, it's extremely inefficient. So, does that, does that answer your question now? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I thought of someone. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you just say a few more words about the plans for, like, larger than memory? Uh, you know, dealing with larger than memory data. Yeah, great. So um, the question is, what are our plans for dealing with larger than memory data? Um, so Modin is built on top of Ray, and Ray uses the Arrows Plasma Store as its backend. And the Plasma Store, with with the Plasma Store, we can actually use the disk as a as a backend for for the for the actual Plasma Store. Um, I played around with this. You can actually scale beyond uh, beyond your memory with this. There are just some performance things that we want to tune a little bit before we actually start exposing this. So, um, essentially, though, using the disk as a backend for your for your memory and yeah, using it that way essentially. So if I load like a fifty gigabyte data set, if I have hard drive space, can I just load that using Modin? Now, if you don't have 50 gigabytes of memory, or you would have to have a little bit of memory. Yeah, yeah. Hard drive space. 
Yeah. So it, it would not work on the current master, definitely. Um, so, so we don't expose it yet. Basically, the the kind of disk backed uh, data frame, if that makes sense. Um, but in the future, I mean, it's it's not something that that will take a lot more effort just because of the really nice abstractions we get from Ray and Arrow. So. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, where does it break most often? Where does it break most often? This is a good question. Um, like, like this, you know, for example, like you know, the, the demo, like, like how often, like what sorts of things do we expect to break? Well, the demo was supposed to work. That's not, <laughs> that's not where it normally breaks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is, this is the nature and the risk you take with live yeah, demos. Is that they can just, they can just like I, I think it's my Jupyter environment, honestly. Sure. Um, but where it breaks most often is um, with indexing. Um, so we we store the index separately as an optimization, so that we keep the memory inside the partition small, and we just keep like a numerical index, um, you know, inside the partitions, and if, if we've written bad code effectively, or if, if, if something ends up going wrong, usually it ends up presenting itself as index mismatch, effectively. So um, that's, that's kind of where things break most is with, with the indexing. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm just if, I, if I have a large part of the use of pandas and I make that one line change, Okay. Where to start debugging in, in Modin or in your yeah, own? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, what sorts of things like? So you're saying indexing might be a place where? Like, yeah, index indexing indexing is um, something that we're always working on effectively. Um, yeah, that, that that's normally how how issues present themselves. Um, normally, it ends up with like some kind of like we're not. We're not effectively communicating the right amount of data or the right data from the partitions to the actual index object, and so that's that's where things kind of get misaligned, um, if if that makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.